Why don't you tell our listeners like your story? So where you grew up, because you do, you left, I feel like I'm going to get the facts wrong. You left home at 13, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. But how did you get into dance? So where was starting with the story when I was how, born how or, you, or, or well, how did you get what? Wait, you were born in the town you started dancing in, right? Yeah, I was okay. born and raised in a small town. Uh, oh, the name okay. of that town is Izhevsk, which is um, kind of close to the middle of Russia. You know, yeah. Um, it's a military town. It's known for numerous things, but we're not going to name them. Uh, but yeah, born and raised. I started as a hobby. The first thing started was like a, playing a hockey, which is I think everyone in Canada or Russia that's like one number one sport. Then obviously ballet that never worked out for me because I was just not good enough to go to ballet. As uh, what they do, they who's they, they? pretty much well ballet school. Okay. Let's say the specific ballet school that my mom brought me to. They look at the structure of your body, and if it's not necessary, like ideal and what they want, they just pretty much say, like, we don't really want you to try because unless you're capable of being the best, right? Um, they don't really want to put a lot of effort to it, which is which is rightfully so. If if there's a potential, go for it. If there's not, it's it's kind of like they don't really waste your time. Um, so the best thing from there was so both of those didn't work out. So hockey and ballet didn't work out for me. So the next thing was uh, ballroom dancing. So it's yeah, due to my mom. And how old were you when you started? Oh, goodness. I, um, probably like 11, 11, probably. 11, 10, 11, something like that. Okay. Yeah. And then what happened? And then I danced. And you, so you danced in your small town. You got obviously really good to where they were like, you need to be in Moscow. I, 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 I was okay, you know, winning competitions around oh, okay. my neighborhood. Okay, oh, he's so humble. So cute. Winning competition in the neighborhood, you know. Um, and then... Pretty much my coach at the time, where, who, uh, who lived in, in Moscow at the time, he told my parents, hey, if you want him to improve and be better what it is right now, because there's obviously certain limits, because after have certain coaches and, you know, all these opportunities, he said, like, he should move to, uh, to Moscow to pursue his, you know, career, if he's serious about that. On which case, mom said, yeah, of course. So they, yeah, they just gave me, like, green light. Yeah, go, go fly. So I moved first with my dad for probably he's been there with me probably for about a month or so. And then he went home. Mm -hmm. So and then I was like, cool. And what age were you in Moscow by yourself? I was probably about 13. 13. And then when did you go to Germany to dance? Uh, shortly after, two years after. So I think I was 15 when I went to Germany, 15, 16. So I've been in Moscow for a bit, dancing, competing. And then um, I moved when I was... 16, I think. Yeah, 16, I think. Yeah, something around that. Um, moved to Germany to, again, dance. So found dance partner in Germany, represented Germany, and lived there for two and a half years. Oh, wow. Yeah. You learned German? Have ever learned German? Yeah, Sprechen Sie Deutsch. I did. I, I did speak a bit when I was there. Obviously not. By no means great, but you had to kind of go by. Um, it's a hard language to learn. German is yeah. really hard. Ugh, so is um, Russian. And then after then, I moved back to Moscow, and then I danced there for a bit again. And then, yeah, and then here. States. And then you became an icon. I don't know about icon, but, you know. Well, then you surviving. competed. Is that when you competed in the first season, So You Think You Could Dance? That was 2005. Wow. That was the first thing so I think you dance. Yeah. And it was really an accident. Uh, my dance partner, like, hey, do you want to go audition for it? And I was like, okay, why well, we can. Um, and the reason why I even said, like, yeah, let's do it, because it was in LA and me and my best friend at the time just uh it's like, yeah, we'll go to LA, we'll go out, we hang out, it's cool. And never been, let's check it out. I'm like, great, let's do it. So that happened. Wow. And then my partner got cut and they kept me. And yeah, and the rest is history. How far did you make it that season? Oh my goodness, what is that? Top six, I think, or but first, I think six or eight, something. But the like first that. ballroom dancer, correct? first ballroom dancer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I loved when Gleb was on the podcast and he was talking about like 
all the roads you've paved for ballroom dancers and doors you've opened and the history you've made. I thought that was so amazing because it was stuff that I didn't even know. And I was like, wow, made me so proud of you. No. I'm proud of you no matter what. But I don't know if I paved the road for ballroom dancers, but I definitely could say that in a, dance. I was the first in, ballroom yeah, dancer. Yeah, that's paving I, a way. You know, I, during, during that. But I think at the same time, Dancing with the Stars was running. So. Yeah. I, well, not at the same time. I think they kind of like co run almost at the same but I think that was a little bit later that was their first season too so um, nice yeah. that's amazing so those are the people involved besides me right no of course well um, and then you went to Strictly after that so after that I was doing well actually not after that I didn't actually go to Strictly right away so I danced competed then I did say things can dance and I decided to um do the whole, you know, I don't say Hollywood, but that industry because I don't know, just ready for something different. You know, competing is great and you do it for a long time. And I've done it all my life prior to it. And this like a new thing opened up. I started realizing, oh, there's different styles of dance because we're really never exposed to any other styles of dance besides ballroom. And I decided to stay in LA and just see what happens, you know. And started taking classes and stuff like that. And started doing small gigs. Um, and also, like, by the way, performing on Dancing with the Stars was one of them, too. Like, doing, it, like, an appearances on it. Um, and then I got a call from this uh, company called Burn the Floor. I don't know if people know, but it's, like, a worldwide dance company that does ballroom and they travel over the world. It, uh, it, it was born in Australia. And it's, uh, at the time, they were doing a Broadway show in New York. And they asked me, like, hey, would you want to participate because they're looking for uh, for dancers? I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with it, you know? Because at the time I was doing gigs, but nothing to do with ballroom dancing. So I was kind of like, oh, hey, this would be nice to come back to it. Uh, I was doing that, then I did a world tour with them, and then I got an email saying, like, hey, would you want to do Strictly Come Dancing? And for the audience who don't know what Strictly Come Dancing is, Strictly Come Dancing is the original Dancing with the Stars. So in the U.K., they came up with a concept which was called Strictly Ballroom, which is ordinary people just do the same thing as Dancing with the Stars. So there's a dance coach coming into ordinary people from their houses and they just learn how to dance. And then on BBC, there was like, okay, we did you know, the, uh, singing with the stars, we did acting with the stars, why don't we do dancing with the stars? And um, because the original show called Strictly Ballroom, they decided to do uh, Strictly Come Dancing. That's how it became to what it is now dancing with the stars from all over the world and um so i got call from them and they said like hey would you want to be part of it? and i said yeah of course i definitely want to be part of it uh because i couldn't do dancing with the stars in the u.s for um what would you say huh? uh, interest conflict of interest oh, situation conflict. yes like what? couldn't do that one yeah so next best thing was really come dancing and uh yeah got in there I think it was 2010, beginning of 2010. Uh, my first season was very lucky to win right away. And I did for four years, which is they only do one season a year. So I did for four years. And then I got asked, like, hey, would you want to do Dancing with the Stars in the States? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So from there, I just moved back to States and uh, did Dancing with the Stars. Aww. Since season 18. Wow. What is it right now? Season 30. Two, I believe. Something crazy. Yeah, season thirty-two. Yeah, season eighteen. So it's been what? Wow, that's crazy. Is well, which 13? one was your favorite? Hold on a second, season eighteen. Yeah, yeah, that's true. What is it? What season was your favorite so far? Oh, I know that silly question. Twenty-five. Better. I 25. love it. Well, and so Artem, when you were a young boy leaving Russia, what did you have like a specific dream? Was there something like your like I always wanted to be? And what dream do you have left that you want to conquer? And it might be a few. I mean, one of the dreams for sure, you know, was like, oh, yeah, I think I want to move to America and live in America. I think that was one of them, definitely. Um, but other dreams, I don't know. You see, like we didn't grow up on like, at least I didn't grow up on, like, I have this goal in my mind. I want to, you know, go to space. Like, there was no such thing. Dancing was was an outlet for, you know, be good at something and feel like you were something. So, and I know that was very achievable because I could see potential, you know, be good. And I think that's why it stuck really well with me. But 
there's not really like a specific goal like oh, i want to be you know like mr olympia or something no it it, it, it would never it was never that um i, I want to be good at that i want to be good at dancing yeah that's you know for sure i want to be good at dancing and be you know proud of what i do and be able to you know explore the potential how far you can go all of that stuff of course um but goals our oh, goals always changes you know i'm thinking my parents you know they're getting older so i want them to have a good life yeah you know like Aww. that's that's one of my goals is to make sure that they you know can get to America. spend uh last however many years they have in them like you know happy and comfortable and you know like be like feel like oh, okay you know we, we deserve the retirement yeah you know and you know it's it's hard because they're hard working people you know they they worked all their life my both parents are engineers and um they both retired and they they just been champions because my brother have two kids as well and they pretty much like the best grandparents you can ask for so yeah and i would love to have the for mateo no, no I, I would love for Matteo to experience, you know, my, my dad and my mom yeah. and, you know, be able to, like, actually, if they even communicate in some level, because obviously my parents did not speak English and Matteo does not speak Russian. Uh, but I'm hoping there's going to be, because I know my parents actually start learning, which is so funny. Like, my dad kind of speak English, but still, I think he's more afraid to speak English. But, yeah. but my mom starts learning and she find it very hard to learn stuff yeah. because... They're 70, so it's like imagine if you're 70 years old oh. trying to learn a language. Um, but yeah, I think I think the dream and the goal would be them seeing them here and be able to communicate with, with our son. Oh, I would love it. It's really cute. So Artem, we have this photo of his parents framed at the house, and we'll ask Mateo, who is it? So he sees Artem's mom and he'll say grandma or babushka, and then he sees Artem's dad and he goes, Daddy. And I'm like, no, it's your grandpa. And he's like, no, daddy. <laughs> but you and your dad do look so much alike in that photo. And Mateo will not believe me that that's his grandfather. And it's so cute. He's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, 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 grandpa. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, yeah that works too. And I loved because the other day Mateo was like, he, so we got him a toolbox. Well, Artem got a toolbox. Mateo just loves, like I see the engineer mind. He loves to put things together, whether it's railroad tracks or he has put together a landing strip for his toy planes. Um, but this toolbox Artem got him, he can like screw, like has fake screws to put in wood and all that. And he was just like over minding his business. He's like doing all his stuff in his toolbox. And he's like, babushka. Babushka, babushka, remember that? And I was like, oh my God, he keeps saying grandma in Russian. It was so cute. But I mean, there's nothing more than I want to get um, Artem's family here. And I think we will. And, you know, we're going through the process. It just takes a long time. Um, But we're hoping because I would love that. I mean, for Mateo, of course, but especially for you and your family to have that. That's what life is all about. And like you said, to have your parents ending of their life to be with their son finally since you left at 16 years old. I mean, how special would that be? Earlier, but yeah. Or earlier, 13, I mean, you're right. Um, so, but, oh, well, Artem, I think everyone will love hearing that. And I know there's so much more to your story, which we'll have to get to at another time. 